back. This is Dave Vellante. We're live, VMworld 2011. I am with Wikibon.org, and this is SiliconANGLE's continuous coverage of the VMworld event, and I'm here with the killer panel. We're going to talk about beyond storage virtualization. I'm going to start all the way to my right, my colleague and good friend David Floyer. David, thanks for coming on. Hi there. And uh, to David's left is Mark Farley, who is with HP. Uh, but Mark, you're on as an independent blogger here. You understand that, right? Okay, whatever okay, you good. say. Okay, good, great. Yeah. And uh, Mark, you know, tremendous insights, and uh, thanks for coming on in a pinch. Uh, and to my right, immediate right, is Steve Keniston, also an independent blogger. Um, and uh, an observer, former analyst with ESG. Thank you, Steve, for coming on. Thanks, Dave, thanks for having us on. So guys, we're going to talk about beyond storage virtualization. David Floyd, I want to start with you. I showed some data at the top. It was data around um, the, the three-par metadata that you, you pulled, just metadata, no customer data, that analysis that you did, that statistical analysis, and what was the bottom line of that analysis? What did it show you? Uh, the the, the uh the particular data you were referring to was the uh, forecast or the, the metadata? 51% greater than 150% oh. utilization improvement. Right, right. Yeah. okay. So uh, the VMware, uh, what, what that says to me is that the most important person in the data center is going to be the, the virtualization architect. And he's going to be the center of storage, a defining storage going forward for the next few years. Uh, storage administration is going to get absorbed into that layer of management and the decisions in that area are going to be made uh, more from a systems point of view than the traditional storage point of view. That's the, I believe, a very important long-term trend. The, the other part of that is that there's going to be a very interesting battle between the network people and them wanting to hold on to the network and, and organize the storage network, uh, and if you like, uh, the Cisco view of the world, and the uh, more of the storage VMware view of the world, uh, where they want to manage it as part of the computing component of that. I think Mark, those two are very important. Uh, Mark, I want to I want to ask you. Um, you said you were with Ecologic. And you were three par prior to the HP acquisition. Um, two companies, real disruptive, real innovative, um, along with Left Hand, you know, along with Compellent. A lot of VC money went in. It really changed the storage business, didn't it? In, in, in a relatively short amount of time. Focus on simplicity. Um, what's next in storage innovation? Well, I think, I think the thing that's next is something that you've really got your thumb on. Uh, what's going on with SSDs and flash, what the evolution of that's going to be how, what the integration is with systems, how these different components integrate. I think some of the, uh, I'm not just trying to blow smoke here, but I think some of the most intelligent things that I've read about that actually is what, what you guys have been saying. You know, Thanks. The analysis that, that yeah. you've been coming up with, and that's what I see as being the next thing that will, that has a chance to rip a hole into the storage industry. It's going to change, change that, that's the next thing that will change the industry. Steve, you agree? Anything you'd add to that? No, I would agree, and I would also go back to a little bit about what David was talking about, right? I see it's it's this dynamic pendulum that ends up happening, right? So at first we had store, we had systems administrators, and then we went all the way to the to the right, and we have storage administrators, network administrators, and server administrators, and now you have this notion of virtualization. You've got big systems coming in. These big systems are now taking up one single you know uh, rack, and it's filling it with both network servers, storage. It's becoming cloud, and we were even talking at lunch today how now you're seeing the staff start to slowly collapse back again. So the pendulum is now swinging back to the left where the network administrator, the IT, you know, you're saying about the different network people getting involved and that sort of thing. Now it's the, the lines are getting blurrier and blurrier. It's going to be one person. And then all of a sudden you're going to have one system to manage. The simplicity of that system, now what do I need from that system? To Mark's point, I need speed, I need performance, I need flash. It just starts to keep evolving and evolving. Guys, I want to talk about the role of cloud service providers. Now we all know of of, uh, have friends who used to work at uh, storage networks. Hot, high-flying company in the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, and they set forth, Peter Bell and his team set forth this vision where all this you know, storage is going to be provisioned in the cloud. And of course it didn't happen and we all you know, can debate why and we, I think we understand why. But now the cloud service provider trend is coming back. Um, Mark, why is that and, and is it real this time? Yeah, so the big thing is when storage networks first came out, there wasn't multi-tenancy capability with the systems, and that killed it. 
right? You, you can't really have a, a, the notion of a cloud service provider without having lots of customers. And storage networks didn't have a good way to accommodate lots of customers efficiently, right? At, at, a, at a reasonable cost, at a cost that could compete with their own IT organization, right? So today, with, with virtualization and, and the things that are going on with storage designs, you know, new storage designs, you can get multi-tenancy. And that way, that, that allows the cloud service provider to have leverage that storage networks never could have had a decade ago. So much has changed in 10 years. A lot of that has to do with, uh, with system virtualization, but also, also with the storage designs that are behind mm -hmm. that. So I, David, oh, go ahead Steve. I was just saying the big key to Mark's uh, thought around multi-tenancy becomes security, right? So now, now not only can I do it cost effectively, the next thing I need to know is, is it secure? And as long as I have both of those, it's cost effective and it's reliable, then I'm okay. Mm -hmm. You know, David, I, I, I want you to uh, respond, but I, I want you to do it in the con this context. The, the typ typical IT shop, what, what are budgets doing? They're flat, right? We all know this. The typical cloud service provider, flat budget? No. No. So where's <laughs> the innovation going? So is, is the gap actually increasing between the traditional IT shop and cloud service providers? And, and will that continue to increase? And what should IT people do about that? Should you just outsource, outsource everything? or? change the way in which they're operating internally? What's your advice there? Well, I, I, I think the leading edge, as uh, was mentioned before, is on having clear multi-tenancy and being able to offer not only uh, security, uh, access to those uh, resources, but also to offer very clear quality of service to, e to each of those tenants. And that's quality of service in terms of bandwidth, in terms of latency, and in terms of IOPS. So to be able to monitor those, aggregate those out, and make the most efficient use of those resources. And that to me is the big next step. Flash is going to be a great uh, uh, enabler of that because it simplifies the whole access to that data. Uh, you don't have all of those problematical uh, uh, low performance devices uh, there. So that's going to be one of the, the big uh, enablers of that strategy. Uh, and what's going to happen in my view is that data centers are going to follow the same path of providing that multi-tenancy within divisions or within applications within their own data center. So they're going to follow a year, year and a half behind that in providing that same quality of service and that will be a key enabler in, in pushing out uh, the cost of IT into the business. And it's when you've pushed that out properly and easily into the business that, that the new generation of applications will take off. In, in, in my view, that's a, a key prerequisite. And Dave, I think you ask a very interesting question, right? What's driving innovation from an IT budget standpoint into the larger vendors? And I think what starts to happen is, as IT starts to look at the value of their data, and they start to delineate between which data they would keep in-house and want to apply some super powerful resources to with you know, powerful servers and storage and, and have control and better analytics over more capacity versus what data is it okay that I can then lead into the cloud, you start to look at, yes, the trend in IT spend is, might be down or flat. We talk about it being flat at IBM. Um, while it might be flat, what you're seeing it do is it's shifting towards the more valuable data in the, uh, in the data center. So the big spend around innovation comes around, what are those things where I need to get the biggest bang for my buck, and then what are those things that I'm willing to spend a whole lot less for and push off and let other folks manage? Okay guys, so we're, we're almost out of time, but my last question, and Steve, this is a little unfair to you because you just got here, but in the context of storage and storage futures, what's the most interesting thing that you've seen at the event. Uh, I want to start with you, David. What's the most interesting thing we've seen here? Yeah. Um, uh, I think the most interesting um, thing that I saw here was the VMware vision of getting rid of LUNs, basically, of going towards storage volumes, of putting of all the data, the metadata and everything else about those volumes all in one piece, controlled by the VM. Uh, to me, that's very exciting. Um, I think that gives a fantastic opportunity. The death to of LUNS? Value. Sorry? Death of LUNS? Death of LUNS, yes. Careful, Mark's going to start everybody. a blog. <laughs> so I, I thought that was fantastic, and I think that's something that's going to come out over the next you know, three, four years. I, it can't come quick enough. As far Mark, as you're a trend spotter. Anything you, you, you sniffed out there? Well, the, the most interesting thing that's gone on here this week, I think, has been this whole VX Lance thing that came out this morning. 
what's going on with extended extended distances. What you know, to me, uh, that's that's really got my imagination running right now. There's some people wondering. Scott Lowe is wondering, why do we need something else? Why do we need a new standard? So there, there's something going on there. And uh, you know, VMware is building a coalition to go after this new standard. I'm just dying to find out what it is and why. How about you, Steve? So I think uh, I think standards are always interesting to follow. The big thing that I that I have seen, and again, because uh, the hurricane, I got in late last night. So walking around the floor today is how many folks are actually talking about storage efficiency. So you know, with all the different different technologies that are coming down, with whether it be tiering, uh, thin provisioning. Uh, deduplication, compression, um, whatever it is, right? The fact reclamation. Reclamation. <laughs> <laughs> the fact of the matter is, is that you know a disk drive can't get any faster anymore, right? And we can't put any more stuff into it. So, what are the different types of techniques and technologies that we're going to be able to use to be able to make that disk more efficient? And in the process of doing that, then how do we leverage focusing the most important data there? and then being able to do better things with that information, making my business more profitable. I like to look at it from the end user perspective to say, how do I become more efficient? How can I make my business more money? I see that as a way to be able to do that. Excellent. David Floyer, Mark Farley, Steve Keniston, thanks so much for coming on this uh, in-depth spotlight panel. You guys are great, and uh, love to do it again sometime.